Welcome to the Great American Collectibles Show, heard Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on PSA.com and the PSA Facebook page. The Great American Collectibles Show is brought to you by PSA and the National Sports Collectors Convention. Tonight's headlines are brought to you by Sports Collectors Daily. For all of your hobby news, features, and more, visit sportscollectorsdaily.com. And now, your hosts, Tom Zappala and John Mallory. <laughs> Johnny Boy. What's up, my brother? Little Purell? We just, we're we all good? sanitized. We're all good. Anybody want any Purell? We're all good. We're good. Everybody good here? <laughs> we're good. In my team. You're sure? Yeah. Yeah, hey, man, just a little. We're behind. fine. Yeah. David, is that all right? <laughs> uh, welcome to the great craziness American. all around. Yeah, there's, man. There's, there's craziness surrounding us. Welcome to the Great American Collectible Show. First of all, I know it's Wednesday, but it's really Friday, so Happy New Year. You too, brother. Happy New Year to everybody. <laughs> uh, let's hope that uh, 2022. Uh, for the Con hobby, can can't, can't to be, get better. Can, right. Can't be much better for the hobby, the <laughs> but for the rest of the world, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's hope that 2022 Absolutely, is a little better. Yeah. A little better than it was. This stuff is uh, a lot of crap going on, bringing us down. Yeah, you know. But listen, uh, <laughs> this is our last show of uh, 2021. First show I'm of sorry. 2022. Let's last taping. That. Right. This is our first show of the new year, and what better guy to 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 have it? Than Couldn't without, have a better guy than with our good friend Joe Thomasulo who's going to join us in a, in a few minutes. First, our headlines, and this really isn't a headline. This is kind of a PSA for our friends at Sports Collectors Daily, Rich Miller. Uh, for those of you that are unemployed, uh, <laughs> if you're proud of your sports collection and and want offers to see it, why not write about it? What I Collect is a new series of stories written by Collectors for Collectors. You can submit your story to Sports Collectors Daily, along with photographs, showing off your best, most interesting pieces, and hopefully one, one with you in it. Oh, no. Yeah. Whether you have a passion for a specific team, have collected a certain player for many years, focus on game-used memorabilia, or simply have a huge collection of everything under the sun, Sports Collectors Daily, want, they want to know about it. So first, drop them a note at editor at sportscollectorsdaily.com with some information on your collection and what you like to write about, and Rich Miller, they will respond. So guess what? If you really have a cool collection... I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you write about it. It'll be featured in Sports Collectors Daily. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, uh, get the hobby news at 24-7. Just go to sportscollectorsdaily.com. And I've said this every week before we bring in Joe. This is a new format. We have broadcasting live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, yep. part of the United Podcast Network family, which we are very excited. It's been great. It's awesome. been great. A couple of things we, we're asking is that please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would appreciate it. Uh, you can watch our videos. You can watch the show uh, on the YouTube channel as well as the Facebook Live page and Sports Collectors Daily Live page. But also, uh, we're going to enhance our, our YouTube channel uh, starting uh, in the next couple of weeks. Where you, you know, besides just watching the show, we're going to be posting news, little blurbs, little content. commentary yeah. on camera. Sure. Myself, JM, Rico, right, even David, and maybe we can get Chrissy too, because she's quite frankly uh, of the whole group. She's by the far smartest and the prettiest. Well, no doubt. Yeah. There's no doubt. So. Someone had to teach you guys about baseball. Dude. That's not. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's, that's right. not a hard contest to win. So you, can, you can also. Uh, so we're also. I on mean, a, for God's sake, Dave finished second. <laughs> so. We're also on uh, iHeart Radio. Uh, you can uh, listen to us on uh, TuneIn Radio 980 WCAP up here in the Boston area. Well, actually, you can listen to it all over the country. Yeah. Just tune in at 980. Uh, you can ask Alexa when you walk into the room and you. And you uh, look at look at look at it look looks at like Arthur look, Fonzarelli look at there in the mirror. I mean, you're combing the... your hair. Are you kidding me? Come on. But you should have done the father. There you go. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you can. Uh, there's all kinds of platforms we're on. Uh, Alexa. Uh, 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 what else? iHeart Radio. Uh, so just find us. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, just search. With that being said, let's search bring in. and you shall find. Oh, <laughs> please like us and subscribe. That's all we're asking. And share. You got to share the show. Share the wealth. 
Or Sonny the show. Right. Sonny or Cher will do. All right. Let's bring in that good friend, <laughs> uh, Giuseppe uh, Tomasulo, uh, from the old country, uh, Connecticut. Uh, right. <laughs> how are you, Joseph? How you doing, buddy? Good morning, Tom. Tom how you Hi, guys Joe. Doing? <laughs> Joe, uh, how was your New Year's? Although you haven't se- celebrated it yet, how was your New Year's <laughs> Eve? Oh, I'll let you know in about six hours. Oh, right. so you, hours. You, you can't tell us how drunk you got. That's out of the question. <laughs> right? I don't really drink too much, Tom. Social drinker. Social drinker. Right. Joe, that's when I saw you at the National, that we had to pick you up off the floor. <laughs> that was... I'm kidding. I'm only kidding. That was, wasn't that Derek? That was, that was Derek. Grady. That was Derek. That, that was, was Derek. Grady. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Joe, listen, uh, we're going to have kind of a free-form Friday today uh, uh, with you. All right. You know what? We're going to talk about Memory Lane. You guys uh, have a big auction coming up in the spring. You guys just completed an auction. But besides that, let, we really want to get into 2021, what your thoughts were, what your thoughts on 2022 are going to be. Uh, you know, was Santa good to your family? Was Santa, we'll start off with that. Was Santa good to your family? I'll start with me. <laughs> very nice very nice do you have uh do you celebrate joe i know you're italian i, I don't know if you're full-blood italian but you don't get into that whole italian thing on christmas eve do you with the seven fishes no i actually i visit my family down in staten island new york Tom. there'll be a little fish i don't eat seafood oh, okay yeah so you know um, you know growing up i was the kid that sat at the table and watched everybody eat you know, we, we do, do like um, three fishes, two, you know, uh, hoofed mammals, <laughs> and then one amphibian to be named later. So you know what we do? We, we make it simple. Ellen and I, Christmas Eve, we have yeah. our martini. <laughs> and I, which in is a every dish, night, by in the a way. dish, <laughs> in a dish, in a dish, I put seven goldfish crackers. Oh, well, that's perfect. Right? Yeah. And that covers it. You get the red and green ones for yeah. the. Uh, then, we, then, then we have it covered. <laughs> Hey, Joe, tell us about the latest, au- the last yeah. auction, the yeah. last auction first before we talk about the future. Oh, the last auction, most of our auctions go really well, Tom. Um, again, we set a lot of records, a lot of record pricing. And, you know, unlike past memory lane auctions, we had a big section of Pokemon cards. <laughs> Pokemon on open boxes, and which is kind of uh, out of my realm as far as getting into depth, you know, about their value, whatever. That's not my thing. But, you know, that stuff is hot, Tom. And it did really well. Yeah. I, 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 very, I, I, very well. I'll be the first to admit that I don't know a hell of a lot about Pokemon. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I don't I, either. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. I know it's huge. I guess we should probably... Uh, Come up, get up to snuff. I'm going to do a lot of Pokemon research. In I mean, the next Joe few days. Marino. Yeah. Joe, Joe Marino is thinking about getting rid of all his vintage cards and just investing. Just going Pokemon. Pokemon, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yeah, Pokemon and Cabbage Patch dolls. They should start vintage Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon and Cabbage Patch. That, that's what Marino wants to get into. Tom, you should sell your T206. Yeah, right. Not happening. Right. Not happening. But I'll tell you what I am doing. And Joe, you know, I'm doing this because of advice that you gave me. A while back, you and I had a real nice conversation. I, I mentioned it last week. You know, I've been working on my T206 collection for 30, 32 or 33 years, and I have gotten a tremendous amount of joy out of it over the years, and I've passed a lot of it on to my son. But what I, what I, excuse me, what I decided to do was uh, get rid of a lot of them, private sales, keep my, my core group of uh, Hall of Famers, uh, and a couple of other cards, like the Elberfeld uh, Eric card, uh, the St. Louis version. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm kind of re- redirecting my my uh, collection into memorabilia. Only reason being is I know, I've been working on cards for a hundred years, and after speaking to you, I'm I, I'm gonna start working on uh, signed baseballs. But my goal is. You know that famous picture, the 1939 uh, Hall of Fame induction picture? The first yes. one. The first yes. one. The first. That has all of them except Cobb and, Matt, and Maddie in it because Maddie had already died and Cobb was late. My goal is to uh, 
collect a signed ball from each one of those of, of each one of those players, and that's what I want to display. Now that's a little ambitious, and that's the advice you gave me, because single signed balls, uh, a Matty single signed ball, or a, uh, a a Grover Cleveland Alexander single signed ball, you're talking astronomical money. And I asked you, is there still value if I get like a, a, a Grover Cleveland Alexander ball, but there are other, other signatures on it, but as long as I can, I can show the signature as a single sign in my display. Is there a big drop off in the value? There is, but there's still value. So let's go to Matheson. Yeah. I mean, a true, a true single sign Matty ball Nice looking. They're few and far between. You're probably looking at six figures plus. Yeah. See, I, that obviously, let's say I there was an order. Yeah. And let's say there was an autograph or two on the back or the side that you can present the Maddie, but you don't see the other signature. Yes. Um, you're going to drop off at least 50% in value. 50% in value, but how much in price to buy it? Same thing. Oh, okay. So, so fifty grand, right. forty grand, fifty grand. I, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Right. All and right. Again, the value of any ball, Tom, <clears throat> just like any baseball card, is based on the aesthetics. It's all about visual appeal. I got gotcha. you. Okay, that's good. Good advice, Joe, and I appreciate it. Yeah, Joe. I, I mean, Tom. My best advice for anybody: don't ever buy something with what I call has an asterisk. Meaning when you go to sell it, when the day comes where you want to move it, yeah. it's going to be a tough sell because of poor eye appeal. Yeah, You know, there are people that will try and spend a little less money, get what they call as a deal, but when they go to sell it, they're going to find out they probably made a big mistake. Gotcha. Good, good, good advice, Joe. Good advice. Yep. Joe, this has obviously been, and Tom, it's been kind of a, a weird year and a half to two years for the world, for obvious reasons. Um, and the hobby obviously has done very well. But what do you see, Joe, have been the biggest changes or developments outside of COVID? Biggest changes or developments in your business, in the hobby, over the last year and a half to two years? What has come from these odd times that we're in, in your opinion? Well, you know, for whatever reason, John, and <laughs> I guess sometimes I still don't get it. <laughs> the pricing of modern superstars. Yeah. Modern crazy players. Crazy. I mean, yeah. I mean, millions. Yeah. Millions of dollars. And we've spoken about this before. Yeah. It's manufactured rarity. You know, they're one of fives, one right, of ten, right. which is rare. But it's manufactured, and here's the danger, you know, of the modern market, which is why Tom and I have spoken about this, which is why we don't really dabble with it much. So you spend a lot of money on a player, right? Yeah. And then you pick up the newspaper the next day, John Doe, you know, Beats up wife or John Doe. <laughs> right. No, he's right. I know. He's right. Yeah. Right. Now, the the market value of that has to drop. Yeah. Right? You know, when you're buying vintage, when you're buying, you know, you know, even Michael Jordan, I'll call Jordan vintage at this stage. Yeah. Right. Jordan, Chamberlain, Gretzky, Ruth, Mantle, Cobb, etc. You know, um, those guys, their place in history is etched in stone. Right. I mean, you know, uh, their legacy is not going anywhere. And the other thing, Joe, to jump on that so, and you continue talking is that um, the guys you just mentioned, the Ruths, not the Jordans, but going way back, the Roots, the Garrigs, the media wasn't, wasn't like it is today then. So you didn't know all this stuff. Today... If any athlete screws up, they, it's, you know it's, it's it. front page. Forget front page. It's on the web instantly. It is. So you're right. It's a fragile, well, it's a fragile investment now. Uh, let me add, though, Joe, to, to what you're saying and what JM is saying. You know, the, the problem that I have is that I try to decipher between 
collecting modern cards for the love of collecting or collecting modern cards for the speculation and investing. It's all speculation. Well, I, yeah. I, I, that's what I, that's what right. I, I, I want to yeah. wrap my arms, try to wrap my arms around. Now, because I equated, and uh, listen, we have a lot of viewers that I'm sure are not going to be happy with what I'm saying, <laughs> but because there, there are a lot of young collectors. Sure. But I equate it with guys that are day trading in the stock market. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a tech stock that came out. They, they do their research, and they pull the trigger. As opposed to the stock investor who's been around for 100 years who, who buys slow and steady. Right. Apple, uh, AT&T, IBM, uh, General Electric, yeah. you know, whatever. I'm just mentioning stocks. So I have no problem with the manufactured rarities, Joe. If you're going to buy a manufactured rarity, I don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem with it if you're buying it simply for the investment and to make a buck rather than you really like that Tatis player or you really like that uh, 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 whoever, Zion, uh, Ma- uh, Mac Jones. You know what Although I mean? Although Zion's a great example because this is a guy that through injury and being out of shape might be, right. could be out of the league in a year or two. Correct. Who knows? And I'm sure people dove in big time financially on his Absolutely. cards. Absolutely. So. What you're saying has a lot of truth, Joe. Now, Joe, uh, hold on. I I want to follow up, Joe, with one more question to you. Now, over the years that you've been doing this, and you've been at this a long time, have you ever seen an investment in a vintage card that went south? I mean, totally south, dropped off the board. Have you ever seen anything? I mean, I haven't, not that I'm aware of, unless, I mean, really, I really haven't. Um. Well, you know what? So I can come up with a few examples, okay? Um, E-cards. Candy cards had a really bad run for a while. They went south. Uh, they sideways to maybe down 10, 15, 20%. Even Cobbs, Wagners, Maddie. Yeah, but they all came but, back, Joe. They all came they back. But they came back. That's, right. that's, that's, that's the point. I'm getting it. Turkey Reds. Turkey Reds went so so south, like they just, they just died. Right, like the value right. of them just, you know, it just like hit a brick wall. And now they're soaring again. You know, you got to pay. I mean, you could buy a Thai Cobb PSA 3 for $5,000 five, six years ago. Now it's 22 to 25000 Interesting. Right? Very interesting. You know, so... Again, listen. There, there's a. You want to talk over the long haul, Tom? The answer is no. Yeah. I haven't. You know, over the long haul, things run in cycles. But good vintage, typically ninety-five percent of the time plus, makes its way back and more. The other thing, the other issue with the modern market, and I'm not trashing the modern market because obviously there's some great young players out oh, there. Oh yeah. This and as an help. investor, you want to maybe jump on board, but. I was talking to my nephew the other night about a player, Le'Veon Bell, running back. When he was with the Steelers, his first three, four years in the league, this kid was on a, on a Hall of Fame track, okay? Free agency hits. He wants more money. He ends up signing with the Jets for more money. We haven't heard from Le'Veon Gone. Bell off the, off for the, the last three years off the cliff. because he left a good situation off in Pittsburgh. Uh, good now, this point. guy was looked upon as the best back in the league, okay? But they make yep. these moves now with free agency – Good point. You go to the wrong team, all of a sudden your value drops big time. We are chatting with Joe Thomas. We're not going to take a, a break uh, yet. We're chatting with Joe uh, from uh, Memory Lane Auctions. In the next segment, we're going to talk about the auction that's coming down the road and uh, a few other things. But uh, our giveaway this week, we found one more. Here, you can hold that up. All right. We found one more. Tony DeMarco, former uh, undisputed welterweight champ of the that's world. That's our guy, man. Tony passed away yep. uh, about two, three months ago. Yep. A very dear friend. Yep. An icon in the city of Boston. Great guy. He signed a bunch of these for me. We found one more. So that's our giveaway uh, today from the Staten Island Joe Marino piece of crap <laughs> museum <laughs> bag. That is where we're pulling the names out. All right? Nardo. And yeah, that was a great yeah. man. Yep. Uh, what else? There was, oh, the other thing we're going to do after the break is, Joe, I asked you 
Uh, your five picks of cards to keep an eye on in 2022. I'm going to give my five picks. And by five picks, I, I, you know, I don't want you to say it, uh, uh, you know, a, a, carb, a green T206 carb. <laughs> I'm talking about cards that have potential to, to, to become a good investment. They could be second tier uh, Hall of Famers, whatever. Fair enough? I'm there, Tom. And then and, and JM is going to give us his five Pokemon uh, predictions for 2022. I am going to comment on your five, your top five. Good enough. Completely trash them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Joey T is in the house. <laughs> oh, by the way, later on in the show, after Joe departs, uh, we've got Bob Broadwater yeah. from Collectibles uh, Insurance Services. We always talk about insurance. If you don't, like, Thomas Sewell has five or six million dollars worth of cards. I'm sure it's insured. Bottom line is, if you don't have your memorabilia or cards insured, you're playing with fire. With yep. that being said, we're going to take a quick break. Joe, you can go fill up your coffee cake. Joe, let me see that shirt again one more time. Very, very, very stylish. Very what stylish. do you think? Very stylish. Very stylish. <laughs> very stylish. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Since 1996, Brian Drent and the staff at Denver's Mile High Card Company have led the charge in the collectibles hobby. Mile High is a full-service dealer specializing in buying and selling cards and offers a competitive consignment program for all collectors. Whether it be their computerized want list service, appraisals, or auction services, Mile High has it all. If you've been searching for a company with a selection of high-grade vintage 1888 to 1970 baseball cards and memorabilia that shares your passion, aim high, Mile High. Go to milehighcardco.com or call 303-840-2784 for more information. Hi everyone, I'm Rico Petroselli, and I'm very excited to talk to you about our new partner, Panini America. Panini America is the world leader in licensed sports and entertainment collectibles, and we're proud to have them as the official trading card of the Great American Collectibles Show. When it comes to modern trading cards of your favorite players, Panini America leads the way in terms of innovation, design, creativity, value, and fun. From landmark brands such as Donruss, Prism, and Contenders, to high-end juggernauts like Flawless, National Treasures, and Immaculate, Panini America delivers the hottest trading cards of the biggest names in the NBA, NFL, MLB, PA, NASCAR, soccer, and college. When you want to collect the best, collect Panini America. Ask for it at your local hobby shop or at mass retailers like Target and Walmart. And you can always find Panini America online at iCollectPanini.com. Panini America, who do you collect? How would you like to own the bat that was used by your favorite player when he hit that towering home run or game-winning base hit? Now look no further than JT Sports, specializing in the sale and authentication of professional game-used bats. As the official authenticators of professional model game used bats for PSA DNA, JT Sports will guarantee the authenticity of any bat purchased from them. JT Sports also buys and sells game-worn uniforms, gloves, and baseball equipment. The unique quality of the collectible is what JT Sports is all about. Give them a call at 609-487-8003 or check them out at GameUseBats.com. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auction and Collectibles Company. If you're looking to maximize your return on your sports cards and collectibles, look no further. We at Memory Lane Auction House offer you several options to achieve top dollar for your collectibles. Whether you're looking to auction or sell privately, we're the number one choice with over 17 years in the hobby. Nobody will work harder to achieve your goals. Just call us today at 877-606-5263. That's 877 606 L-A-N-E, or visit us on the web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Go with the best. Go with Memory Lane. It's often been said that championships are won on the practice field, and world records come only to those willing to work harder than everybody else. Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer because we believe that becoming the best is only an invitation to the challenge of remaining the best. This requires the skills of the hobby's top experts, capable of identifying and maximizing value for our consigners. It requires the most visited website in the industry, 
supporting a global audience of collectors over a million and a half strong. It requires a dedicated press department that expands our global reach far beyond the entrenched hobby marketplace. It's hard work, but a simple premise. Present the finest collectibles to the largest population of potential buyers, and world records will come. We invite all listeners to put the unmatched power of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Auction evaluations are always free, and our commission-based fee structure ensures that our interests are always aligned highest possible price for your collectibles. There will always be new world records to chase, so let's chase them together. Visit our website at ha.com and request your no-obligation review today. This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a $0 deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. Okay, we are back. We are chatting with our good friend Giuseppe Tomasulo, aka Joe T. That was that, that was your name when you were working for the boys in uh, Brooklyn, right? Joe T. <laughs> we did that at the same time. Did you just do the nose thing, Joe? <laughs> when, when you were working for the boys, did you do the nose thing? I did say <laughs> it's exactly the same, right? Time. <laughs> I mean, Joe, I'm not questioning your background, but right. I, I've heard I've been that speaking you, to my mom. I, I heard you. <laughs> just put it this way: I heard that uh, when you were in grammar school, you always came in with a pinstripe suit on. That's right. all I'm saying. All right? That's all I'm saying. But listen. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think you struck a nerve. <laughs> right. My five picks, Joe. These are my five picks for 2022. These are cards to watch. These are cards that I think are going are gonna to be good investments, not worth a tremendous amount of money, but good, solid investments. Okay. Joe, yeah, you can agree or disagree. You ready? 1948, Bowman. I'm what? Oh, 1948, Bowman Berry, uh, Berra rookie card. Yay or nay? I think that's a card that has it's it's you know it it, it why it, it peaked. Uh, I think because that whole uh, t- time frame now that forty eight Bowman fifty two fifty five fifty six tops. Yeah. I think they're picking up ahead of steam for the okay. Hall of Famers. Okay. So what do you think about the forty eight Bowman Barra rookie, Joe? I'm not. I'm saying yeah, slow, I, slow and steady. I think it's undervalued. Um. I don't know if Vera carries that much weight in the hobby, uh, you know, to make it, you know, a bang for my buck. But um, you know what? It's a sleeper, and it's definitely undervalued. It's one of those. And he's one of those. He's one of those guys that probably should carry more weight, but he just doesn't. He doesn't have. Well, part the, of part of it's an ugly card too. It's a it's a black and white, yeah, small little black right. and white card. It's kind of and a, he was kind of an ugly player. I don't mean looks wise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, but he right. played. You know, he wasn't graceful like DiMaggio. His, his stats weren't overpowering like Roots. He was just consistently awesome. No, I for agree. a long time. All right, number know? two, 19, right. 1954 tops Willie Mays, fifty four tops Willie Mays. What do you think? Hmm. Joe, don't answer too quickly. Can't go wrong with any Mays cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously any Willie Mays card is a good choice, Tom. Yeah. Um, well, the reason John, the- um, you know, you've seen his, you've seen his fifty-one Bowman rookie and right. fifty-two tops climb the ladder over the past year extensively. Yeah. So maybe now is the time to jump on Willie's like. Third, fourth. That's exactly why. That's exactly you know, why I'm calling um, that card, Joe. Yeah, I'm calling that card because it's still an affordable card, and as you said, the 51, 52, uh, even the 53, they, they've kind of climbed pretty quickly. I think the 54 is still a good buy, and I think that's going to climb. It's a good pick. And it's Tom. One of my choices was mid 50s 
Hank Aaron card. Well, I have a fifty-four. So, I have a fifty-four tops Hank Aaron rookie card. The fifty-four tops Hank Aaron rookie card is a fairly expensive card, but I think that's a card that's going to continue to uh, to appreciate. What are your thoughts, Joseph? Yep. I mean, one of the three greatest right-handed batters of all time. Yeah. Who were the other two guys? Uh, of all time? Well, I mean, you're going to get Babe Ruth. All time. It. Babe Ruth. Oh, righties, you said. Righty. Right-handed Three batters. greatest right-handed batters. Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, that's... Who, do you, who were the other really two? tough, right? I don't know. I mean, uh, this, this, uh, I don't know. Who, who, you who? count Pete Rose, who was a switch hitter? All-time hits leader? No. You Hornsby don't and Fox. Okay. All right. Rogers, okay. Hornsby, and Jimmy. Okay, All right, I'll pick that. I'll take that. All right, next. 1955 Tops Clemente. 1955 Tops Clemente. Already red hot, but I think there's, I agree, Tom, I think there's still room. There's a lot of, you know, growth potential for that card, even on top of where it's gone. All right, another one. This one here, I'm, I'm looking as a sleeper because for some reason, I still don't think he gets the respect that's deserved. Yep. 1954 tops Ted Williams. I agree 100% with that. 54 right? tops yeah. Williams. That card is, is you know, he, he's coming back from Korea, just back from Korea, year, year and a half. Uh, I think that card has got potential to to really appreciate. You have that look in your face, Joe, that you're not so crazy about that. <laughs> no. Um, and you know there were two Ted Williams. Yeah, the one with the head and one without yeah. the head. Right. There's the first card. That was a joke. I forget the cryogenic the thing, and the frozen thing. I got you. I'm sorry. He was the first card in the set and the final card in the set. Good set. Tom, that's, that's a good pick. Um, I like that pick, too. But I gave you the look because... I think we could apply that, you know, uh, philosophy to all Ted Williams cards. We have a bad I connection. I think they're huh? all very undervalued, other mm. than his rookie card. Yeah, yeah. bad Wi-Fi in, in Connecticut. Joe, your Wi-Fi sucks in Connecticut. I just want you to know that. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. We'll let it go. All right, last guys. Yeah, um, I'm going in and out right now. I know. Uh, why don't you pay your Comcast bill? That may help. See, there's a delay besides. All right, listen. Last most, card. Of, most of your jokes, there's a delay, <laughs> by the way. That's... Joe, la last, last pick. Last pick, 1948 Leaf Stan Musual. I think that's a good investment. A 48 Leaf Stan. What, did you see my list? No. Did you take a peek at my list? I did not. Is it on there? Is it really on there? <laughs> yes, yes. I think the 48 Leaf Musual has huge growth potential. All right, so now... Um, you know, and I actually... I think even the 48 Bowman Musual, I think Musual in general is so undervalued. Tom, think about it. I agree. How... Think of Musual's popularity if he would have played for the Yankees or Red Sox. Oh, God, yeah. He would be gone. That's a good yeah. point. Right. Very good point. Right. All right. Now, you're the expert. I, I okay. want to just, Chris, quickly, because I want to get both of you. One of the questions I had here for Joe before I even saw your list was because just in the interviews we've done over the last year, I've seen a rise in discussion and popularity and maybe even value in Clemente and Aaron and Mays and even Jackie Robinson. Do you guys see that continuing with those players in 2022? Because I think we're talking more about those guys now than we did two, three years ago. Go ahead, Joe. You answer first. Is Joe dead? <laughs> <laughs> Joe looks like he's in. Okay, there he is. He's back to life. Joe, did you hear the did question? Did you hear the question, Joe? Yeah, Tom, you're going, you guys are going in and out. I know. Okay. It's, it's uh, nothing we can do about it, Joe. Um, it's just a Connecticut. Just forge ahead. Yeah, I know. So to answer, to answer John's question, John, you're spot on. I think Jackie, Clemente, Aaron, yep. Hayes, and I think even Mickey Mantle, even though he's red hot yeah. and at the top of the chart, yeah. I think you will see those cards from the 50s, late 40s, 50s, continue yeah. to inch up so, over the next year or two. I, I want think. to add to that, though. I think that those cards, and you're right, I agree 100%, but I think there's another group of cards that are right beyond those 
Yes. Uh, Pete Rose. Uh, some of those guys. Right. I think some of those yeah. guys. Uh, I would love to see those that. those six, those late late sixties guys that came up in the early sixties and made their bones exactly. in the late sixties and early seventies. I think some yeah. of those guys are, are going <clears throat> right. to appreciate. It. All right, Joe. Let's hear yours. Your five. Uh, nineteen seventy one Partridge Family PSA. <laughs> Just joking, guys. You know the weird part is I have that. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Dan, it's the Danny oh. Bonaducci rookie. <laughs> yeah, there you, there you go, John. Um, actually, David Cassidy and Susan Day. All right, right, can we move on? Anything with Susan so, Day is good with me. Huh? Out, you know I love vintage. <laughs> Susan, can, can, Susan can, Day can, was my first love. Can we move on, please? <laughs> go ahead, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> she was hot. She was. So, <laughs> Actually, she's still pretty attractive. It's it's not that it's a sleeper, but it's so undervalued compared to other carb cards. Go find some nice T205 gold border tie carbs. That card is going to take off Good. like a rocket. Good to know. We're both writing this down. <laughs> I, Jesus. You know, Joe. I, Joe, I, I take you an eighth of a second to get that down. Joe, off. I got to tell you a quick story. I bought that card about 20, 25 years ago, right? I bought it on eBay. It was, uh, wasn't was graded. It wasn't graded, but it was a killer card. I bought it from a guy in Canada. I said, this card is a... PSA three or four at the time. Yeah. Right? I paid like 400 bucks for it. Sent it to PSA, fake. Uh. So I got the card back. I contacted the guy in Canada who was wonderful. He says, I didn't know. Yeah. He gave, I got my money back. Oh. He got his money back. Nice. And they traced it. Very but that yeah, was a fake. I was very disappointed. All right, what's, what's Joe, your second Joe, by the way, Joe, you notice I'm writing down your suggestions, not <laughs> Zaps. So. All right, what's your second choice, Joe? Second card. <laughs> Joe's dead again. He's <laughs> stuck with the dead. <laughs> uh, but there's a, there's a little caveat with the T205 car. Yeah. You have to get one with nice gold borders. Yeah, gotcha. That, Joe, that's next to impossible. Because gotcha. if the gold borders have wear, the eye appeal becomes very poor, yep. and it's just not desirable. Right. So, ante up, Tom, dip his back. <laughs> I want that fake back. And, <laughs> <laughs> but, all right. So, this is more of a, like a general um Projection, like not one particular card. E cards, candy cards, but tie carb and harness wagon. Okay? They're going up. They're definitely spiking. But versus their T206 peers, yeah. they are just so much scarce. I was looking for, Joe, I was looking for an E90-2 Wagner. They're next to impossible to find. That's like the poor man's... <laughs> T206, right? Yes. E90-2 Wagner is great. And by the way, you just stole my third. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to that in a second. But So on carb, E95s, E93s, Good to know. E101s, E102s. Maybe I'm going to call back like the that. cards. <laughs> Forget the balls. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm writing this down. <laughs> and... Number three, Tom. Yeah. Any Wagner card with the Carl Horner T two hundred six pose. What's the? I'm sorry, Joe. I didn't pick up with the what? The Carl Horner photograph. Oh, the okay. T two hundred six. Oh, gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Good. That's okay. that's, that's that's see that's a piece. Um, this is good. awesome. Yeah. Which E ninety dash two? Yeah. Tip top red. Yeah. Tip top red. So you understand what he's saying? I do. There, there, there are a lot of car, car, uh, Wagner cars that have that image, but in different series. Right, that aren't T206, as but as the same fact, image. The, the E90 yeah. 2 has a blue background, I believe. Correct, Joe? Correct. Yeah. And in a nice grade, like a, a nice three or four grade, it's such a beautiful and car. Kyle Horner was the, the photographer. Was pops. Yeah, I played. Okay. He was a linebacker. For the, uh, oh, Are you that serious? Was, that was Kyle. No, I'm sorry. Kyle Malden. <laughs> Kyle Malden. <laughs> All right, what else, Joe? What's your next one? 
M116 Superstars. The Sporting Life M116 set. But again, we're looking at Cobb, Wagner, Matthewson. Yeah. Walter Johnson's a big sleeper yeah. in that set. Uh, Walter Johnson has the famous Carl Horner portrait pose. In fact, what makes that set so beautiful, all the cards are the Carl Horner portrait images. Some of them are pastel background. Most of them are pastel. And some of them have a beautiful blue background. Okay? Try and get the blues. Okay. The blue good. background ones are worth more, and I think they have much more investment. Excellent advice, Joseph. All right, listen, let's switch gears. Let's go to 2022. You have a huge auction coming up when? When is your is it your winter auction? Uh, what do you call it? Okay. I know when it's going to end, Saturday, February 19th. The start date is going to be late January. Okay. I okay. just don't have the exact date. Now Keep that, an eye though, out I on the website. Give you that. Yeah. Okay, but your your winter your winter auction is is a that's a pretty pretty good size auction, correct? Uh, almost two thousand lots. Wow! Oh, yeah, very cool. Um, wow. We have a piece in two. Well, we have a Babe Ruth rookie starting it off. That's a good way to jump out of the <laughs> You think? That's you not think? bad. In a, yeah, that's not in bad. In a five and a half, big strong guys. Wow! Okay? <laughs> wow. Um, opening bid one hundred fifty thousand. So, wow. lot number two, and I hope you guys have your seatbelts on. Go ahead. Because we unearthed it from an Illinois family, okay? Her grandfather owned it. He was called Grandpa Eddie in the vaudeville uh, industry. The yeah. Grandpa so Eddie. Grandpa, Grandpa Eddie. This is, this is really cool. Grandpa Eddie left vaudeville to run the Peerless Theater, it was called, in the Midwest, uh, in Illinois. Yeah. And hanging in the lobby of the Peerless Theater, it was a three-foot by ten-foot long movie banner of Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth Comes Home 1927. Wow. Which was first national pictures. That would good, that would look nice on my ceiling the, over my bed. Grandpa Eddie John, swiped it. Did he swipe it? <laughs> John, the condition of it is incredible. Wow. The original color still there. Wow. And so three by ten. That's like a wall. Oh yeah. yeah, that's right. a that's yeah. a. Yeah. Oh, so what's the when 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 Grandpa Eddie left the Peelers Theater? You know, <laughs> he went to prison. He had taken with them. <laughs> Obviously, no value back then. He stored it for over. For roughly 90 years in his closet. Wow. And his daughter found it in the closet, you know, knew some people at Memory Lane. We made the connection. It's lot number two in our world. Joe, what's the starting bid going to be? Uh, probably 25000 But, guys, let me tell you something. You know, we used hedge terms like arguably, yeah. virtually, you know. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to. Put all our eggs in one basket. Yeah. Unquestionably, irrefutably, this is the most incredible dominant advertising piece ever unearthed in the sports industry. Wow. It belongs in the lobby of Cooperstown. Yeah, yeah wow. you're probably right. Uh, David, you're right, we're gonna Joe. go an extra three or four minutes. Yeah, we can you're always probably carry right, over. Joe. Okay. Yeah. So Joe, it's in and it's in I pretty got, good it's in pretty good condition. Very good condition. Really? You That's know, amazing. A couple of surface abrasions. Yeah. A few small, few, a few very minute holes. Right, right. That you don't even pick up on. Sure. The, when you see it, guys, you're going to do a double take. Wow. It, the, the color is outstanding. No restoration at all. Hey, Joe, by the way, a thank you to JP. You pro I'm not even sure you're aware of this, but we got a really, the four of us, myself, David, JM, and Rico, got a nice gift in the mail from you guys. Very he's, nice. He's beautiful. Do you like the coffee? Love it. Really? Absolutely. Awesome. It's got a little him. Babe Ruth. I got two. Ball in yeah, there. that's good. You got yeah. two. Actually, I got the four was sent to my house. And I said, look at they sent us a nice set, Ellen, all four. She goes, I think that's for all of you. <laughs> so I said, all right. All right. Thank God for John, Ellen. I have, to get in, I have to get in one other collection real quick. Okay, hold yeah, no, on. Go ahead. Before you do that, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to send one more of those in the mail to me. No rush for Chrissy. 
Can you do that? Come on. I would love to send Christy a coffee. Ah, awesome. uh, thanks. I was just about to say I did love her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pam, what's the other set? <laughs> Tom, uh, guy, uh, our consigner was collecting these over the past probably 15, 20 years. You know the Gowdy 33 set, 240 subjects? Yeah. 229 near set. Okay? Yeah. Now, you may say, oh, that's a great collection. Uh, yeah, it's a nice collection. Oh, all autographed. What? Every oh. card. Yes. How does somebody man, do that? Man, Including the one Babe Ruth. He had two Ruths, but he sold one with us earlier in the year. He had both Garricks, sold the Garrick with us. So we have the other Garrick, one Ruth, and every Hall of Famer. And some incredible rare cards. Are you said? Are you going to sell that as a set or individually? No, every we broke it up into individual lots. There's about eight or nine lots that have nine to ten cards. You know, more in the low end stuff. That yeah. Is, you know, not as rare, but there's some really interesting cards. And you know, and Tom, John, I know you guys like the backstories on this stuff. Absolutely. So. Jablonowski was a pitcher for 14 years. He was a journeyman pitcher, bounced around. You know, during that era, you know, with all the, you know, bigotry and racial dissent that was kind of accepted back then, unfortunately, he was ridiculed for his Polish descent. And he also married a lovely woman. I can't even pronounce her name. I would be laughed off the air if I tried. But she had a long Polish name as well. So the rumor is he couldn't imagine his wife with those two long Polish names, you know, after his marriage. A, a third possibility was um, he was a, like a concert pianist on the side hmm. and he needed a shorter name for his music career. Anyway, he changed his name, legally changed his son's name to Appleton. We have the Jablonowski card signed by this pitcher, Appleton, and another one signed Jablonowski. Wow. Oh, very wow. cool. Nice. And both of them are PSA pop one. They're the only one. Fat wow. For each. So we put them together as one lot. Joe, we have about one minute left. So I cool. just want to ask you uh, your website address. Uh, MemoryLaneInc.com. All right. We're going to give you one minute. We have one minute. Your all-time team. Ready? Real quick. In one minute? One, one minute. minute. First base. Lou Gehrig. Second base. Rogers Hornsby. Shortstop. Harness Wagner with an asterisk for Alex Rodriguez. Third Go base. Ahead. Wow. Mike Schmidt. Undoubtedly. Yes. Your outfield doesn't have to be left, right, or center. Your all-time outfield, I don't care where they're playing. Cobb, Ruth, and Ted Williams. Liking it. That's a good no, outfield. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, that's it. Cobb, Ruth, and Williams with an asterisk for Willie Mays and Joe DiMaggio. Your right-handed pitcher. Has to be Walter Johnson. Your left-handed pitcher. Coin toss between Grove and, and Randy Johnson. But nine ERA title seals it for me. I'm going to go with Grove. And finally, who's – oh, no, two more. Who's your catcher? Johnny Bench with an asterisk for Yogi Berra. And who's your DH? Oh, <laughs> let's go relief pitcher. Relief pitcher Mariano Rivera. Okay, who's your DH? Oh, man. Just pick David Ortiz. No, you can't yeah. do that. You, you know what? You know what? John is right. David Ortiz Clutch. is the greatest. All right, I, I'll, I'll buy that. I'll buy time. that. Yeah. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. I know a lot of people are not going to buy that. I mean, I would go with someone like Mays. But oh, I mean, you can pick a position player and make him your DH. Absolutely. Oh, I you thought you meant a guy that actually no, played DH. No, no, you can oh. pick anyone. Okay, I would Good. go with Mays. Good. I'd go with Mays. Well then, well then, if I'm I got Mays, I'm putting him in the outfield. Though. Was no, Joe Jackson. <laughs> Who do you go with, Joe? Who's your right. DH? Shoeless Joe Jackson. Okay. Oh, all right. That's a good choice. There you go. I all like right, it. Joseph, we love you. Uh, happy New Year. And 2022 is going to be a banner year for everyone, business-wise, health-wise, economically, everything. We're, we're giving them the Italian good luck. <laughs> 
Take care, buddy. All right. Thank you, Joe. John, happy new year, Tom. Happy Take new year, guys. Joe Tomasulo, I know we're running a little. Uh, he's uh, awesome. Yeah, he's great. He's just fabulous. Yeah. You know, we just, he gets it when he, he does. Just, plus, he's a wonderful guy. See how guy. he rolled with that? He's in a great one minute. Guy. That was a, awesome. Wonderful guy. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We come back. Bob Broadwater is going to join us from Collectibles Insurance Services. Hang in there. We will be all right back. If you are a discerning collector interested in owning the most important pieces in the hobby, look no further than Leland's Auctions. The original sports auction and appraisal house, Leland's was established in 1985 by legendary pioneer founder Joshua Leland Evans. And today, President Mike Hefner carries on the tradition. From the Tom Brady card and memorabilia collection, to the famed Boston Garden auction, to high-end card auctions from every major sport, Leland's has always maintained the highest standards. Go to Leland's.com and get your bid in. That's Leland's the hobby's leading sports auction house for four decades. For more than 30 years, Robert Edward Auctions has been the industry leader when it comes to helping you realize the most money for your baseball cards and sports memorabilia. In addition to their unparalleled reputation for honesty and integrity, they reach the largest number of bidders in the business and offer lower seller's fees, as well as generous cash advances up front on your valuable material. Contact them today at 908-226-9900. That's 908-226-9900 or at robertedwardauction.com. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auction and Collectibles Company. If you're looking to maximize your return on your sports cards and collectibles, look no further. We at Memory Lane Auction House offer you several options to achieve top dollar for your collectibles. Whether you're looking to auction or sell privately, we're the number one choice with over 17 years in the hobby. Nobody will work harder to achieve your goals. Just call us today at 877 606 5263. That's 877 606 LANE. Or visit us on the web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Go with the best. Go with Memory Lane. Pristine Auction is a family owned and operated online auction specializing in autograph memorabilia, sports cards, coins, art, and collectibles. Since their founding in 2010, they've grown to two facilities in Phoenix, Arizona, totaling over 60,000 square feet. Jared Cavalli and an incredible staff of over 150 team members serve a very large customer base and enjoy every minute of it. By working with leading authentication companies, Pristine ensures all items are 100% authentic. In addition, third-party authenticators regularly travel to Pristine Auction to provide authentication services on-site. Pristine Auction strives to operate its business in a way that's honoring to God, their families, and their customers. With a strong focus on speed, quality, and premier customer service, their mission is to be the leading online auction for every level of collector and fan. Pristine also works for Hope Sports and Identity Hoops International, traveling to Mexico to build houses for the less fortunate. Pristine Auction offers several online auction formats with thousands of auctions ending each day. For more information, go to pristineauction.com. That's Pristine Auction, the best in the business. Panini America is the world leader in licensed sports and entertainment collectibles, and we are proud to have them as the official trading card company of the Great American Collectibles Show. Panini leads the way in innovation and design with great brands like Donruss, Prism, Contenders, Flawless, National Treasures, and Immaculate. Partnering with the NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball Players Association, NASCAR, FIFA, and College, Panini is certainly at the head of the hobby. You can find Panini products in major retailers like Walmart and Target or online at iCollectPaniniAmerica.com. That's Panini America. Who do you collect? This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a zero dollar deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. Sarah found out camping. What was that? Wasn't her thing. So she eBay bought her tent to Tom. 
who just had to get out of his house. But Tom needed road trip money, so he eBayed the crock pot he never used to Steve, who wanted to turn the heat up on date night. But Steve needed counter space, so he sold his decanter it was a vase. to Sarah, who'd found a new outdoor hobby. Pink, uh, red. eBay. Sell something and make room for something new. And in fact, Zap, eBay is the place to go for all of your memorabilia, sports or non-sports cards, autographs, and much more. Whether it's a gift for that special someone like you or you Thank just you. want to add to your collection, eBay's huge marketplace should be your first stop. And if you sell, now's the time to flip those cards and get some extra cash. I shop on eBay all the time, and that's true. That's eBay, connecting buyers and sellers globally. I just bought a toupee on eBay. <laughs> You should have got a three-pay. <laughs> All right, listen, uh, we are pleased to have uh, a, a really nice guy who understands the importance of, because he works for them, but <laughs> point being is that everybody, and we've, we, we try to drum this into your heads. If you have a collection, cards, sports memorabilia, Pokemon, Cabbage Patch dolls, whatever they are, you have to have them insured. You if, do. If they're not insured, you do. You're, you're playing with fire. So we asked our good friend Bob Broadwater from Collectibles. I've interviewed Bob because the first time I've seen Bob. Mm -hmm. it's the first Bob time I've been able to okay. see Bob. Good looking guy. Yes. Hey Bob, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Bob was on stage with us. So we had him. Well, you yes. weren't with us for the national. Bob was, was on not stage for with that us. one. No. Bob, where was that? Do you remember? That was Chicago. It was Chicago. Um, that was 2019. Yeah, I remember that. That was a, that was a good uh, good. You you, were, you did it really 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 well. But listen, let's get into it right away. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Why is it important, first of all, to have insurance for collectibles? Absolutely. A, a common misconception is that homeowners will extend coverage to your sports memorabilia or, or any collectible property. Yeah. And unfortunately, almost always it does not. Um, our product covers your typical losses, water damage, theft, fire, um, any type of loss that you could really have to your collectible property, and it would cover it to the market value, uh, which is which is really important because, as we know, these the values are a moving target. Right. So what you may purchase it for is worth much more today, and the coverage um, attaches at the current value at the time of loss. Bob, I think Zap hit on it. And, you know, here in the Boston area, we're going to be heading into the, the teeth of winter coming up. Whenever I think of, of you, Bob, and, and having one. Not huh? for me. I'll be in Oh, Florida. yeah, you're going to Florida, baby, <laughs> baby. Uh, <laughs> I always think of this. I, I don't know, but when, when he said Bob's on the show, I think of addicts and sellers. Right. And yes. that's where a lot of people's collections that maybe they haven't delved into yet. They've been keeping for a while in the attic or the cellar. You know, moisture, cold, too much heat. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you just talk about that a little bit? Because I think those are the factors that really Burglary. come into, I mean, there's a lot of yeah, stuff, right? You know, why you need to insure your yeah. collectibles. Yes. Uh, water damage, particularly in the basement, is very common. And it's not just a broken pipe. Water seeps in. Yeah. Uh, moisture damage. That happens over time. We talk with our collectors. If it's going to be somewhere like that, it needs to be in sealed uh, plastic bins, something that would weatherproof. Um, the items to prevent them from any type of uh, moisture damage, uh, excessive heat in the summer, particularly in attics, yep. that will cause deterioration. So really you want to keep it in a relatively climate controlled area and protected from, from moisture, particularly. Bob, what about deductibles? Yes, uh, we, there, are, there is uh, no deductible. There's a $50 minimum claim payment, but uh, if, if you had a $100 loss, it's, it's $100 uh, what we pay out. So there's no deductible for our collectors. Do you guys require uh, a schedule? Like if I have, uh, you know, a collection of T206 cards, I mean, do you need a schedule of everything I own? How does that work? We only request scheduling for individual items worth over 25000 in value. Um, that's just so we have a keep track of them and that we understand what they're worth and uh, ensure to see that on their policy, what those items are listed at. Bob, have you had to get, I know that you're not uh, like, like Joe Tomasulo, who we had on. His business is collectibles. He's been in it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Have you had to get at least somewhat educated, a, a working question. knowledge of, you know, vintage cards, modern cards, what something might be worth in terms of coming up with a, a plan for your customers? Absolutely. So we hire specialized agents in different segments. Um, 
we have a few folks who work for us who are on our, our sales team and agent team that are very familiar with current valuations out there in the sports space, familiar with the grading processes, authentication yep. processes, uh, valuations, et cetera. So when you call to speak with one of our agents, if it's sports related, uh, one of our folks will be able to help you. Obviously, there's a few niche segments out there that, that there's limited expertise on, but sports being vastly very common, uh, we, we do have expertise in-house. Well, Bob, let me tell you something. This is our sixth year in the year, and Collectibles Insurance Services has been the official uh, company, insurance yeah. company for the Great American Collectible Show. We appreciate it. Uh, you guys have done a great job. Awesome. We really stress to you guys, to the viewers, to the people listening to us, listening to us on on all the different platforms. Please get your goods, your sir, get your memorabilia, your your collectibles. Get them insured. We can't stress that enough. What's your uh, website address, Bob? Absolutely. Uh, yes, most people would be surprised <clears throat> how affordable it is, and they ha uh, we'd welcome anyone to come and get a quote. Collectinsure.com or search for us online, Collectibles Insurance Services, and um, our team or online will be happy to give you a, a quote. And make sure you tell them, the guys from the, yeah, the right. guys from the yes. Great American Collectibles Show sent you. That's what happens when you're doing a show with Dick Clark, who has nine shows. <laughs> yeah. so. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> happy New Year to you. Thank Thanks, you. Bob. Happy New Year. Take, take yeah. care. Bye now. Okay, before we end this show, why don't you hold up our friend Tony DeMarco. I will. And we are going to pick out of the very famous Staten Island Joe piece the of... The champ, man. One of the greats of all of time. All right. I'm going to shake this up. You ready? Yeah. Pick a good one. Yeah, okay. I can find one. Here it is. <laughs> this week's winner is Jim Nineaber. Okay. Jim... Jim Nineaber. Never heard of him. It's a cross between Jimmy Nye and Jim Neighbors. <laughs> That's right. Good point. Well, Jim, golly. Jim, here's the, here's the scoop. Jim Nye neighbor. Here's the scoop. You have one week to message me, PM us, mail, carrier pigeon, donkey. <laughs> I don't care how you contact us. You have one week, and we will be more than happy to drop this into the mail for you. If we don't hear from you in a week, you're out. With that being said, Happy New Year, pal. You too, bud. Let's make it a good one. 2022 is going to be a Thanks great year Thanks to Dave and Christy everyone. very much for all you do. Great, this is the Great Thanks. American Collectibles Prediction. It's going to be a great year for the hobby. Absolutely. The economy is going to skyrocket. Yep. This crap, COVID crap, is going to go away by February 1st. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> nice. And get, do me a favor. And Let's not get political. But if you haven't been vaccinated, please get vaccinated. Absolutely. Please. Yep. With that being said, happy collecting. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.